Some of you have been asking, where is my wife? Gee. Well, I woke up grumpy this morning, so I let her sleep. <laughs> Please don't tell her I said that. We hold book on you now. Yeah. No, she is in an art show yesterday and today. So, in Oregon City Senior Center. So, she's tied up. And uh, two weeks from today, she'll be in, at another art show down in Portland. Yeah. Well, again, I appreciate the people coming and showing up. And yeah. hopefully, you're learning a few things so, about the Holy Spirit. All right, well, let's begin with prayer. Holy Spirit, our Comforter, our living hope, fill our hearts with your truth. Teach us how to walk more faithfully and empower us to speak your name boldly. Make us worthy of your vessels, vessels of your grace. So we praise and thank you for always being with us. And so we ask that you will guide our thoughts as we learn more about you this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right. Well, last week, just let me recap briefly where we kind of left off. Remember we talked about parakletos, that Greek word, and it's often translated in different ways, counselor, comforter, helper, one who gives aid, advocate. Kind of a literal translation is one who comes alongside. And a part of that is also the dunamis, power. Holy Spirit is connected with the power. Power giving us boldness, empowering us to be faithful, etc. etc. So those are where we left off last week. <coughs> Let me talk a little bit more about what it means to be a counselor, how that we understand that. Remember I said it was not just kind of like being a therapeutic counselor, one who listens to you and tries to comfort you, although the Holy Spirit is, is that to a certain extent. <clears throat> but more so is the Holy Spirit is the one who has that power to make us strong, to be brave put courage into us, to embolden us, to be faithful, and to, to have that power to make changes in our life for the good as we fight those struggles and battles of life. So again, the counselor, as Jesus said, is the one who would be coming to us because he was leaving, and the one who would be present with us. And as I said last week, Jesus, in his earthly life, he could be only at one place, one time, with one group of people. But in the presence of the Holy Spirit, he could be with us everywhere, all the time, with everyone. And so that is how he is still with us, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So yes, he is that one of our source of comfort in time of sorrow or loss, but uh, also the one who comes to give us that empowerment and boldness to be faithful as we live out our faith as God's people. So, did you have any questions about that or comments? <clears throat> or maybe times you felt that the Holy Spirit has been in that sense counselor for you? I'm more aware of it since we started talking about this stuff. Okay. Um, when I, as a personal note, when I retired from council, <clears throat> one of the things that the church gave me was a, what was that thing called? It's got a daily devotion in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading that religion, reading it religiously now. <laughs> so in the morning, like, <laughs> The very first things I do in my routine is read. It's just one page. Sure. But it's really, it really has changed my life. I mean, I'm, and I'm honest to goodness, since the last couple months, it's like, I don't 
challenge or I don't I have remember we had that conversation about how do I know for sure? Mm -hmm. And this is all this is all answering it. Every day it answers. Yeah. So I don't even think about it. There's no question in my mind. Okay. It's but it's pretty interesting. But I think a lot of it has to do with the tie-in with this conversation too. So yeah. in my view, for me personally, it's the Holy Spirit working this thing through all these things that are happening. Yeah. Right. What kind of uh, devotion is it? I mean, is, is it something that you buy over the internet yeah. or somebody gave you? Yeah. Something like, like I have a, a magazine that I read this morning with Jesus, and it has just a gone page. Yeah. This is a 365-day, mm -hmm. one-page devotion thing. And yeah, there's, there's all kinds of them out there. Sounds good. Yeah, it's really, it's, 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 I don't want to say it's a quick read. But. <laughs> it is. Well, yeah, at the office, too, there's just a little yeah. devotional that you can pick up. It's a one day, one page reading, and, you know, written by different people from all over the world. So it's yeah. nice to see how you connect with the community of God's people, wherever. So I have a yeah. One other personal note. <clears throat> I was up fishing this weekend or for the last week and I got home last night at midnight from the airport. My flight was delayed, blah, 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 blah. But the whole day, my in my mind, I was committed to getting here this morning. All right. <laughs> so I did my usual routine. I wake up at 6 o'clock. I've got to take a quick nap. I literally woke up at 8.15. <laughs> 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 and then again... I got here. I was only one minute late now. <laughs> I need <hate> Dave. Is <laughs> that the Holy Spirit? Help us. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Well, I have many. I have way more than <laughs> we have time to go through experiences with the Holy Spirit. A very personal uh, relationship through an accident I had, but that's that's another story that would take certainly longer than five or ten minutes. But uh, ever since that time and period in my life, I have just really been more acutely aware and open to receiving and accepting the counseling, the comfort, the help, and the aid. And, um, like I say, many, many experiences. But one I particularly remember was my mother. She was in the end stage of her life, and uh, she had to be at a skilled nursing facility, and she was very unhappy. And she just wanted to go home. And uh, my sister and I, we just had no idea how we could help her. We just, we were totally lost. And I remember we went out into the parking lot of that facility in the middle of that parking lot and we joined hands and we bowed our head and we asked for guidance and I felt on my shoulder a hand such that I just reached my own personal hand over and touched it there was a warmth in it and it was a hand of warmth on my right shoulder cool yeah. yeah, and that hand guided and turned me back into the facility, brought us right to the nurse manager, brought us right to a conclusion, got her help her at home, and boom, she went home that night. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Sure. I would agree. Good. Now that's, that's how the spirit works in our lives. Yes, different definitely. Ways. Yes, yeah. very good. Yeah. I work in a place, um, <laughs> I think we're talking about the influence of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in everyday experience. Yeah. I'm getting about 20%. Okay. Um, but I work in a place where God talk is okay. And they don't nice. tell you to not be who you are. And nice. I'm having more ministry experience at Margie's mm -hmm. than I sometimes did in the church. And a woman mm -hmm. yesterday came in, gorgeous thing. <laughs> And uh, about three questions, and all of a sudden, we're talking very deep material. And um, she's still grieving over her husband, who was a bad man and got killed by the police. Oh, and in the same week, she lost her dad. 
and in the same week she lost her son. Oh, no. And it devastated her. And she, I was so struck by the fact that she's telling me all of this, and she's smiling as she's talking, and the tears are just running down her cheeks. So I said, oh, sweetheart. And I put my arm around her, and I prayed for her. And uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And I think the Holy Spirit uh, took charge of her for the rest of her time there. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Gary, that publication you were talking about, the Upper Room, mm -hmm. comes out every other month. And it yeah. is good because it has the Bible verses and then how people around the world, how the Holy Spirit has acted in their life. Mm -hmm. So I, I would recommend it. Yeah. It's yeah. a good article yeah. there. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. We'll have some time to do some more sharing, too, and how the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. So, well, from this word parakletos comes this word avocat. I want to talk a little bit about that <clears throat> this morning. What does that word mean? As we said, the parakletos the one who comes alongside of us <clears throat> to assist, to be an advocate. One that comes to lend help. And the meaning of that word, advocate, comes from the judicial Fornicenic Hellenistic Judaism. It refers to a legal defender, a judicial advocator, when we face the judgment of God. That is who the Holy Spirit is. So suppose you were charged with a crime, or you committed a crime, what would you do? Hire a lawyer. Hire a lawyer, right. Why a lawyer? I can't defend myself. Can't defend yourself, right. Someone who can speak on your behalf, defend you, you know, when you face the judge, and uh, can especially when you're on trial. So that is who the Holy Spirit is, the advocator, the defender in the face of God's judgments. So it confirms for us that by faith in Jesus Christ, we're forgiven. We're not guilty. The Holy Spirit, in a sense, acts on our behalf and says we are free from the punishment of our sin. Isn't that a comfort, though? To know we have someone that can bring our case before the Lord and, and help us. So in a sense, the advocate is the one that says, no, he, she is not going to hell. Going to heaven deserves the crown of life. So we have that advocate also that is working for us. All right, another title that John gives to the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. Spirit of Truth. Uh, we find this in John 15, 26. John 15, 26. Where Jesus says, when the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. Then also in 16, verse 12 and 13, where he also mentions it. Jesus says in verse 12, 16, 12, I'll have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. So again, it's another kind of a favorite title that John uses in talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. So what is the role of the Spirit of truth? His role is to teach, to guide, to reveal truth about Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit, you might say, is the unfolder of truth for us. Jesus said, I have many things to say to you. However, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. 
As life for the believer unfolds, so that the Spirit then will begin to more and more unfold those truths, open our understanding, and help us to remember that what Jesus had said and what he had done. Remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is truth, do you think? What's the definition of truth here? How would you define truth? Something that's indisputable. Yeah, okay. Something indisputable, yeah. That no matter how way you how you look at it, you reach the same conclusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? About God's plan for our lives. Yeah, that's part of it. Yep. Anything that comes from God would have to be true. Yeah. Okay. His promises, those things, I mean, that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, well, some definitions of truth. <clears throat> it's Christ himself. Mm -hmm. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, yes, what he has taught, <clears throat> what he has taught us about himself. Truth is also more of what Jesus wants to say to us and reveal to us. Gary, do you remember the statement by Karl Barth? when he gave a lectureship at Harvard University. Yeah. And a newsman asked him, after all your great learning and all your wisdom, what is truth for you? And he said, this liberal theologian said, Jesus loves me, this I know, oh, yeah. the Bible tells me so. Very good. Scandalized the, uh, the uh, staff at Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Truth is what is righteous, right from wrong. All right. Truth is also the right path to walk in faith. Those words, that guidance that keeps us in step with Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Truth is God's word, right? God's word to us. Truth is what we need to know for present peace and sanctification, and how the Spirit helps that to come about in our lives. And, like you said, Dave, truth is God's will for our lives and how we reach out and serve Him to others. So the Spirit of Truth will lead, He will guide us into the whole truth, not just part way, or partial. That's what he says, what he said. He will guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the truth. And as believers, there's a lot more we have to learn. Is that correct? Or does someone here know everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the Spirit of Truth we all feel that need if we are open and if we have receptive hearts will reveal that truth to us. And he will bring to our remembrance what Jesus has taught us. But isn't it true though, sometimes we're not ready, we're not open to the truth that the Holy Spirit may have for us. Maybe we're preoccupied or our thoughts are elsewhere or we're working on our own agenda. And so we're not open, but again, the spirit of truth has been given to us, it will help us, teach us, help us to illuminate a deeper truth about Christ and his love and grace for us. And he will be that strong ally, helping us to hear the voice of Jesus, especially if we are in danger of forgetting also, the Spirit of Truth will challenge us. Why? Sometimes it's easy to become lazy, lethargic, complacent in our faith. 
and to forget to slack off in the tasks of the work that need to be done in the name of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit comes and he will awaken us, calling us to action. Has it ever happened to you that you're doing some little chore and somebody's name comes to mind? And you're reminded in a sense to pray for that person? Has that ever happened? That's the Holy Spirit, in a sense, reminding us, helping us to pray for that person. It's an opportunity to serve. Um, Royal Family Kids Camp began, I can't remember when it began, but the first two years I was the Bible story teller. And then I took a break, and the fifth year they asked me to come back, and so I was the Bible storyteller again. And uh, after that, I just did not feel that calling. So last year, <laughs> there were people saying, Pastor Gary, <laughs> you'd be the Bible storyteller at the Royal Family's oh. Kids Camp. Well, I didn't commit. I um, kind of wanted to I guess I wanted more confirmation, and I hesitated, and it was started to have all kinds of excuses, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get out of it. And finally, the Holy Spirit in a sense said, Gary, get with it. Do it. <laughs> this is uncalling. So it was the Holy Spirit again that just spoke to me and uh, said yes. When you did it, did it just feel right? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Because usually the case. It just, yeah. No, it felt right, and I knew it was what I was supposed to do. So, yeah, so again, like I said, the Holy Spirit will challenge us sometimes. And maybe saying, well, you need to do this, or you need to speak to that person, or you need to be involved in this ministry, or whatever. Um, so, we need to be open to that. <laughs> calling that voice that speaks to us. How do you differentiate that voice from all the other little voices that give you excuses? <laughs> <laughs> That's the devil speaking to you. That <laughs> voice and all these other ones constantly. Yeah, oh yeah, true. Yeah. That's right. There's always that competition, that's for sure. A third thing is the spirit of truth will be bring guidance to us in terms of the future, kind of looking forward. In 16 verses, John 16, 13, verses 13 and 15, he will show you the things to come. The spirit of truth will show you the things to come. He will show us those things which were on the way in a sense. Jesus said his Holy Spirit will take what is mine and make it known to you. So when we're thinking about what's next, the Holy Spirit will tell us which course of action that will lead to the fulfillment of God's will. The plans of God and which of our actions which may lead to a disaster. That's why it's so important for us as a church and for our nation to be people of the Spirit. I can't help to believe that our federal, state, and community leaders, if they were more in tune with the Holy Spirit, I think we would all be much better off. But I don't want to go that into politics right now. <laughs> All right, another role or purpose of the Holy Spirit, John 16, verses 8 through 11, John 16, 8 through 11. When he comes, the Holy Spirit, he will convince convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. 
in regard to sin because men do not believe in me, in regard to righteousness, righteousness because I am going to the Father. Very important. Three roles, actually, of the Holy Spirit in that sense. The Holy Spirit has a witnessing aspect to it, a convincing aspect, and a convicting aspect in his work to do. First of all, Jesus said, he will testify about me, the Holy Spirit will testify about me. In other words, the Holy Spirit will give witness about Jesus in this way, witness to the sufficiency of Jesus Christ's atonement for us. The truth about our need for atonement, the Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance, he'll give witness to our need, that forgiveness and being right with God. Also, the Holy Spirit will give witness that we, by faith in Jesus, in belief on his death on the cross and his resurrection, that we are his children, we're his people. He will confirm that for us. He will give witness to that fact that through our faith in this risen Christ, that we are adopted into his family. Another thing is that the Holy Spirit will give witness to the truth of every promise of God in His Word. So as we read His Word, again, kind of like what you're saying, Bill, as we read and open ourselves up, the Holy Spirit gives that witness that we are His people. And those promises that God has for us are true. Also, the Holy Spirit gives witness to God's presence, to the assurance of God's grace in each day of our lives. Yeah. Maybe we have those times of doubt. Where is God when I need Him? Where is His mercy, His grace? But the Holy Spirit will come to us and give witness. God is with you. God is right beside you. He will help you. The second thing is that the Holy Spirit will also be convincing. <laughs> he will demonstrate his truth so that we can see and understand the truth about Christ. And in seeing the truth, convict us or convince us of our sin and our need for forgiveness. So he's in the process of helping, convincing in a positive way. Convincing us of our need for righteousness. Revealing the supreme righteousness and greatness of Jesus. Of who and what he claims to be. So it's just that affirmation that comes to us. Convincing us that what we believe is true, is right. And remember when Jesus was nailed on the cross, the centurion, what did he say? Truly, this is the Son of God. Again, I think that was the Holy Spirit convincing that centurion that, yes, this was truly the Son of God. <clears throat> and so the Holy Spirit will convince us, give us assurance of our salvation in Jesus Christ. But also will convince us that the day is coming, a day of judgment. <laughs> He will come alongside of us to convince us not to follow our selfish desires, to do what we want to do, or to live in disobedience, or to follow the desires of our human nature without consequences. Because one day we will meet our Maker, all of us, whether we believe or we don't believe. But we have the Holy Spirit as believers that comes and convinces us. Stay on the right track. Be faithful. The third thing is that the Holy Spirit will convict, as Jesus says. 
and we need to see that in a positive light. It's not to condemn us and say, you know, there's no hope for you. No. To convict us in a sense, in a positive way, to show us our shortcomings, our errant ways, our pride, our disobedience. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of us to show us, to convict us in that sense. And he will reveal the truth that not to believe in Christ is a sin. The sin of disregarding and disobeying Jesus Christ. So to convict, in a sense, is to expose, to reprove, to awaken us to our sin under the influence of the Holy Spirit so that we can be thankful. A lot of you have children when they were growing up. Did you discipline them or just say, just do what you want to do? <laughs> How many of you have parents <laughs> that said, don't do that, do this. This is not right, this is good, etc., etc. Yeah, that was reinforced by my father a couple times. On <laughs> when you were how old? <laughs> 25? <laughs> it was a plastic belt. I Ooh. remember that. <laughs> of course, and the pain. <laughs> but yes, that Holy Spirit is there to convict us in a good way. Helping us, in a sense, to know right from wrong. And so that we can overcome those bad habits, that pride, that selfishness. <clears throat> All right. So, in the understanding the paracletos. Counselor, comforter, helper, advocate, so on. Any questions, comments? experiences. <laughs> okay. John 20, 22. Another reference to the Holy Spirit in the Gospel of John. Jesus, after, it's a story about where Jesus, after his resurrection, appears to his disciples. All of a sudden, they were waiting in the room, and all of a sudden, Jesus appears, right? And he said, peace be with you. I think they were a little taken back at first, but in a sense, overjoyed, and they were relieved. And then what does it say? He breathed on them, and Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. So how do we understand this passage? The Father sent Jesus into the world with a mission, and now Jesus was sending his disciples on a mission. Matthew, end of Matthew, huh? chapter 28. Go, <coughs> baptize, teach. That was their mission to, to come. To fulfill the work Jesus wanted them to do, they would need the guidance of the Holy Spirit so he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So was this the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit? And Pentecost was the second outpouring? No, this was not the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not given to the disciples at this time. It was a prelude to the outpouring of the Spirit, which they would later receive in Acts, as we read that story. They were to wait in Jerusalem, where they would be baptized in time with the Holy Spirit. So I think here Jesus is simply preparing them for the work that he intended them to do. Saying, in a sense, that yes, the Holy Spirit will be coming in its fulfillment on you. Why did he breathe on them? Well, 
Why do you think he breathed on them? What does that refer to? Remember in the Old Testament, the word for breath or wind? Ruach. Ruach Elohim. Where there was new life, new power given, a new spiritual life. So breath, in a sense, becomes a visual aid to the demonstration that they would receive the Holy Spirit, that outpouring. And this was a symbolic act to show that the Holy Spirit would come from him upon them. Okay, any questions about that? Now we come to the Pentecost experience in Acts chapter 2, 1 through 12. Pente means 50. 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, 10 days after his ascension, which was, and 10 days after his ascension, there was this gathering in Jerusalem for the Feast of the Weeks, one of the major celebrations of the Jewish people. And it was an annual celebration, a festival of giving thanks to God for the harvest of the crops. So you know the story. There was a violent wind as the disciples were gathered there, a wind from heaven, appearance of tongues, fire on their heads. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke in different languages. So what was the outcome of this filling of this empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Now the disciples, they found new courage, <laughs> ready to face the world undaunted. Remember, after the resurrection, they were still living in fear, uncertainty, had some doubts. But now, as the Holy Spirit came to them, they were ready, unafraid to proclaim the good news of the crucified and risen Jesus. And they gained a newfound message. Repent, believe, be baptized. And Peter went out, and remember, he preached, and there were thousands that, that heard that word and were turn, had a turn of heart and believed. Also at that Pentecost experience, they received new insight into Scripture. <coughs> Realizing more fully even that Jesus is the Messiah who had come. And understanding then the meaning of his resurrection, his death and resurrection. And so those meanings and significance of those words that he spoke before now, all of a sudden took on a new reality, a new meaning for them. And the scriptures then that he spoke became much more clear to them. Also, they received power to communicate their message and to speak most boldly the message of the gospel. And it was a message that really found a road right into the hearts of those who heard. Remember what Jesus, uh, John the Baptist said of Jesus at his baptism? The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize <clears throat> with the Holy Spirit. So here we see the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit that happened and then been given to all <clears throat> who believe. All right, that's just summary of what happened <clears throat> in terms of the working and the role of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Now what we could do is we could go into the book of Acts, we could turn the writings of Paul and take <laughs> more look, a deeper look again, what the working and understanding of the Holy Spirit. But I think you could do that on your own. <laughs> There's books, you can go on the internet and you can look up the role of the Holy Spirit in Acts, or the role of the Holy Spirit in the Pauline of writings. So, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Comments? About the work of the Holy Spirit.
anything that maybe came to light for you, a different understanding of the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. What I'd like to do is to summarize <coughs> what we have learned so far in terms of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. And I'll list some references and other parts of the scripture too about the, the Holy Spirit. <coughs> so I'll try and wrap it up here in five minutes. So very quickly, the Holy Spirit is our counselor, our comforter, advocate, one who comes alongside to guide, to teach us the truth that we might know the truth. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is one who convinces and convicts us of our sin. Now, we may be threatened by that or feel uncomfortable, but that's a good thing, isn't it? We need that. Sometimes we are blinded by our own pride or selfishness, but we need that kind of help. So the Holy Spirit convinces, convicts us of our sins so that we can overcome those influences of our sinful nature to help us in the process of sanctification to become more holy, uniting us closer with the triune God. Also we heard that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth, helping us to lead us into a greater understanding of Jesus Christ and His redeeming work among us. And reminding us to keep our attention on Jesus. Also the Holy Spirit lives permanently within us. We'll be talking more about that uh, probably next week or the week after. He lives within us as believers, given to us as a gift at our baptism or when we accept Christ into our lives. We receive the Holy Spirit. Not like the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit is given for t temporarily for whatever ministry or actions that they needed to take, people needed to take. But given to us to live within us forever. The Holy Spirit also bestows gifts. In Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, talking about the fruits of the Spirit and also the gifts that are given. Some are teachers, some are pastors, etc., etc. So there again, gifts for ministry and also the fruits of the Spirit are those gifts that help us to grow in our Christian our spiritual maturity. The Holy Spirit also gives us access to God. Ephesians 2.18 and also Romans 8 aids us in our prayers. So when we come before the Lord, unable maybe to express our feelings, our thoughts, or our needs in words, the Holy Spirit is there to help. And also the Holy Spirit empowers us with courage to be faithful, to share the gospel with others. Just like the disciples, when they received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, they went out. They went out with boldness to serve, to preach. And so the Holy Spirit also gives us <coughs> peace, joy, hope, love, liberty, strength. All those kinds of things that help us in our daily life. All right, let me stop there. But next week I'd like to speak a little bit more about how we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? And how do we understand that? So... And then uh, getting into the reasons why we need the Holy Spirit. All right. Any final questions, <coughs> comments? Thank Dave, you for being Dave, here. Dave's kind of quiet today. I think he has something to say. <laughs> He's been pretty quiet today. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> a, gift, a gift from the Spirit. <laughs> okay, you asked for it. <laughs> I heard someone say not long ago, he was talking about 
being tested and how we uh, feel one of our God is and our testing, we hear nothing. And this person said, you may remember when you were in school, those of you who went to school, uh, <laughs> during the test, the instructors used the silent, right? Just a thought. We love you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Blessings <laughs> <laughs> on your weight. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned.